Hey there, welcome to another edition of uh, Joe's Record Store, the Christian Metal Edition. Um, first, I'm going to start out with Fountain of Tears. Um, Fountain of Tears. Right. Yeah, I think you can. Don't think there's much glare on that angle. Um. Actually, I meant to put this in the Sardonyx presentation because it's actually the guys involved in that band in ministry, you know, did this project. Um, but uh, so I decided to slip it in for this one because it definitely needs some props. Uh, this is a really good project. It came out like earlier in the, I believe, the 2000s. Um, let me look at the back. I know I always say the year wrong. But, oh, 1999. Well, just anyway, um, yeah, this came out at the end of the 90s, but uh, yeah, I got so much it's hard to keep track. But uh, this one was, um, it's like a progressive metal with, uh, you know, a lot of piano and uh, it's like neoclassical piano mixed with progressive metal and the female operatic vocals. I know, you know, about you know, ten years ago, or you know, t or twelve years ago, and that was pretty. Um, that was happening a lot, you know, and you know, it was before you know the female opera singer fronted bands like Nightwish were really, you know, coming you know into fruition. But you know, it's a light, nice project, pretty much you know a one album wonder. But um, you know, it's I'd rather you know a band put out one really good album and you know maybe disappear than. You know, make one good album and make then you know, the rest are just cheese. But uh, anyway, it's uh, the same people involved with the uh, Sardonyx and Lightshine Ministries. And you know, this is uh, probably a little more artsy for some people. You know, if you just want straightforward metal riffing, this might disappoint you a bit. Uh, but you know, it is good musicianship all all in all. Um, and I think, really, I just bought it for the sake of collecting it. I mean, I did enjoy it at the time, you know, when I played it. It's they're definitely better musicians than I am, or I could ever hope to be. And uh, now I'm going to go way back to the 80s. Uh, here's a nice little gem all the way from Sweden. The cultural homeland of my dad's side of the family. This is Svenska Metal Bra. Um, this is uh, Charisma, Rock the World. Uh, God, that is so cliche. I mean, this is so 80s. I think I feel my mullet growing back just from touching this. But um, there's nothing really spectacular about this band. They're kind of like a, almost like a more, how would you say, almost like a slightly more poppy Leviticus, you know. In, in the Swedes, you know, they're, especially in this point in time, very boldly evangelistic. They actually made the American Bible Belt, you know, Christians look shy. But um, all in all, you know, I, a Dutch friend gave it to me, and I had to have it. Why? Because it was from Sweden. But um, it's, you know, typical cliche 80s hard rock, you know. I guess, you know, if I was a kid in 1980, ridiculous, I think this would look cool. But now, it's like, oh my god, but, you know. I, I mean, I still love the music of this era, but you know, it's pretty much, you know, generic hard rock. They, um, according to a good Dutch friend of mine, they actually lived in L.A. for a year. I guess, you know, they were trying to, you know, break the big time like Striper, but... Uh, you know, I guess, you know, the labels didn't really give them the time of day. And, you know, I guess, you know, outside the Christian rock community, they didn't really make much headway. And then, you know, later, I guess the end of the 80s and I guess in the 90s, they became more of a just a, just a pop rock band. Um, I guess kind of like what Petra is doing now, but, uh, or has been doing since then. Um, but, uh, again, nothing spectacular, but, you know, this girl I was with at the time, she thought the, oh, she's, she said the pants were ugly. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, spandex, and, of course, um, anyway, uh, you know, just again, you know, I just filed it away in the collection. I don't even, pl I only played it a couple times, you know, just for cheap kicks. Um, this is a real lost underground classic. It's called Valor. Um, 
I guess um, you could call it speed metal. You know, before you know, in I mean, this is even you know before Deliverance you know broke through. Unfortunately, you know they didn't really get the notoriety that Deliverance did. You know, even though they were one of the first to. Christian bands to play more of the speed metal style. And you know, I guess, you know, this is depicting spiritual warfare. Looks like a colored pencil drawing. Which, you know, I can't draw worth crap, so I can't point fingers. Um, I guess spiritual warfare, demon coming in. I guess that's the, uh, I guess the metaphor for the shield and sword of God. Um... Uh, musically, it's not bad. I mean, maybe, you know, somebody else on YouTube has, you know, put some songs up from this. This is a very rare album. I mean, I could probably score a couple C notes for this on eBay, but uh, I guess I'm just too stubborn and I don't want to sell it. And this was a gift to me from, you know, the same Dutch friend. And uh, actually, they called it Quick Metal. But, you know, it... it Pretty much it does, you know, reflect a lot of the thrash metal that was really happening, you know, at the time. Because this came out in 87, and that was really a high point in time for thrash. Um, you, know, you know, good songs, good musicianship. Um, here's the members. Uh, you know, yeah, so 80s looking. <laughs> but, you know, I can't complain because, you know, I love, this is, you know, when I... This was my time when I was a real young kid. So. But, uh, you know, great great songs for the era. You know, the production is a little dry, but, uh, you know, a lot of Christian metal albums that from that early point in time were. Because you know, it was, you know, just getting started. I mean, it's not like you could find, you know, hundreds and hundreds of Christian, you know, heavy bands now. You know, back then it was still pretty new. I mean, this was when people thought, you know, Striper was outrageous. But uh, this is a good classic, you know. Again, you know, this was, you know, the typical, you know, give your life to Jesus type of band. You know, very evangelistic. I mean, basically, it's just like a, you know, a one big gospel track on vinyl with uh, hard and heavy music. And, um, okay, that's enough from uh, Joe's Record Store Christian Metal Edition. Take care.